maybe we should probably start but actually meaning this time meaning one of the speakers seems that he will not be able to give his talk so uh, meaning we can maybe uh, go a little late that won't be a problem okay uh, let's start so uh, the afternoon session um it's a pleasure for me to be in this uh, conference in honor of enrique and um, so I, I shall be the chair of this afternoon session um, so it's a difficult task uh, presenting someone so illustrious like eve so but i will try to make um, do my bit so in some sense uh, one can say it's like is the plum on the top of the cake for this conference so to have someone so distinguished like him and um, giving a talk here uh, <clears throat> let me just read some of the brief history of eve so eve uh, was born in 1939 yes and uh, he um, initially started his career in mathematics as a number theorist and then mm -hmm. changed to uh, new domains. Like I think uh, very uh, important contributions to wavelets is what recalls my mind. And uh, also it seems that he's moved on from that. And uh, for his important contributions to wavelet uh, and image compression and sensing, uh, he has been awarded, uh, meaning for his lifetime work, I think the Abel Prize. And I can share in the chat uh, a small, um, um, a brief history of his work, uh, which appears in the Abel Prize. Uh, um, I don't know how you call it, the, the quotation. I don't know meaning exactly. Uh, so uh, in, in the meantime, I will do it. So, um, so without delaying any further, so he he is actually a, a, prof a professor at the EN Emeritus, I guess, a professor at the ENS uh, Saclay, formerly called the ENS Cachon. And um, okay, so I hope I've said enough and. And it's never too enough, but uh, I'm sorry. Um, I hope uh, with this introduction, you can start this talk. Welcome, you. Uh, also, yeah, I forgot to mention he he's also the recipient of the Prince of Asturias Award, also. Uh, which is given for uh, people in, in different domains. And he was given this uh, quite recently also, yes. So thank you very much for these very kind words. So uh, the title of my talk is Spikes and Waves and the type will be explained. Querido Enrique, Gracias por tu talento, gracias por tu energía y gracias por todo lo que has dado a los demás. So I'm going to talk about crystalline measures and I'm going, of course, to define what are crystalline measures. Then I will say a few words on quasi-crystals. Then I move on uh, to signal and image processing uh, talking about the work of David Dono, and uh, then sampling and interpolation of trust function, which is related to, to and then uh, the solution of Kepler's problem in dimension eight and 24, and uh, finally generalizations of the Riemann zeta function. If I have no time to finish, I will leave the slides and you can then read the slides. So what are crystalline measures? So uh, the notations are usual, the Dirac 
majeure et is a major supported by this point, total mass one. And in signal processing, it is often named a spike. So uh, the trigonometric function exponential two pi i omega dot x is a wave to so a vibration. And then a crystalline measure is a sum of spikes, which is at the same time a sum of four waves. Uh, where, where the spikes are located on a locally finite set, which will be defined later, and the spectrum S is also a locally finite set. So we have a sum of spikes, which is at the same time a vibration, which is uh, a paradox, but that will be explained. So fixing notation, the Fourier transform is defined with a two pi. A subset of Rn is locally finite if for any ball there are only finitely many x inside that ball. So it is a sequence of points tending to infinity. A locally finite set is either a finite set or a sequence of points tending to infinity. An atomic measure is called a crystalline measure if the three following conditions are satisfied. Mu is supported by a locally finite set. Mu is a temperate distribution. That means that you can compute the Fourier transform. And the distribution of Fourier transform mu hat of mu is also an atomic measure supported by a locally finite set. As mu is not is a signed measure here, complex valued. It is not a positive measure, it is any sign measure. So the simplest example of a crystalline measure is the Dirac comb, which is a sum of uh, Dirac measures on a lattice. Then the uh, Fourier transform of mu is mu. So that's fundamental in crystallography and in many applications. So I repeat the definition. If mu is a crystalline measure, we have the sum of spy which is a sum of waves where lambda and s are two locally, locally finite sets. So in other words, the distributional Fourier transform of mu is also a sum of spikes. Mu itself is a sum of waves and its distributional Fourier transform is also a sum of spikes. So there is a beautiful conjecture if Dirac comes, that means lattices are accepted, a crystalline measure cannot be, together with its free transform, supported by a Delon set. I'm going to explain what a Delon set is. So it has been proved by Nirlev and Alexander Olevsky in uh, uh, dimension one, and it is completely open in dimension larger than or equal to two. A Delon set is a locally finite set which is uniformly discrete and relatively dense, which means that there exists a small R such that any barrel of radius R contains at most a point in lambda and a, another R much larger than any ball of radius R contains at least a point in lambda. So uh, the big uh, discovery uh, was made just a, one year ago when Pavel Kurasov and Peter Sarnak proved the following theorem. There exists a uniformly discrete set lambda of real numbers, which is very different, uh, very different from a lattice because the vector space over the rational generated by lambda is infinite dimensional. If you have z, the vector state over q generated by z is q, and is, of course, a finite dimension over q. And uh, so it is the opposite to be a lattice. The first condition say, say that this discrete set is very far from being a lattice, and the sum without coefficient, so mu is a positive measure, the corresponding the generalization of a Dirac comb over lambda is a crystalline measure. 
And uh, so that relates to uh, PDE. So uh, the first proof of these results was obtained by Kurasov, uh, studying the wave equation on quantum graphs. And it was seminar. So it's a, it's a wave equation on a tree. And uh, then the proof was based on the generalization of the uh, chazarin duisdermatt theory on the Poisson formula on the lengths of geodesics and the spectrum of the Laplace operator. So as uh, Enrique was saying in the beginning, it is very much related to PDE. And uh, so that's a fuzzy crystal, it is the Penrose paving. I'm just uh, saying a few words about the relation between crystalline measures and uh, quasi crystal. So a quasi crystal is a Delon set such that the diffraction image of the atomic measure, which is uh, written here, is also an atomic measure, a pure point spectrum. But now the diffraction image is not the Fourier transform. It is a square of the absolute value of the Fourier transform because it is an energy. And of course, this square of the absolute value is infinite and needs to be renormalized. And this renormalization, which will not be described here, is obtained by dividing by infinite quantity. Therefore, if lambda is a quasi-crystal, f is a fine set, the union is still a quasi-crystal. So uh, from this, you see that there is a very loose relationship between crystalline measures and quasi-crystal. So, uh, and uh, it is written here, if lambda is a Delon set and mu lambda is a crystalline measure, then lambda is a quasi-crystal, but the converse implication is not true. So, The first non-trivial crystalline measure was discovered by Andrew Guinan, uh, who was a number theorist, in connection with number theory and the Riemann zeta function. So this happened in uh, 1959. This construction would not be deleted because uh, detailed at the end of the lecture, because I will not have time. So now I am relating this problem to signal processing and image processing. So that's the work by David Dono and Philip Stark. So they consider a class of signals which can be represented as a sum between a few spikes and a few waves. And the motivation is that many images can be modeled as a sum between a cartoon and a lecture, a texture, sorry. A cartoon image is sparse in the wavelet domain. A texture is sparse in the Fourier domain. So the wavelet domain, uh, just by a change of, uh, of basis, can be viewed as spikes. And the Fourier domain, in which a texture is sparse, are waves. Then Dono proved that a few spikes and a few waves are linearly independent. So let me be more precise. And here is a beautiful theorem, which can be given to, uh, to a college student, you know, to just to check if he's gifted for research. So the discrete model of the preceding problem is obtained by replacing Rn by the ring of integers modulo capital N when N, where N is an integer. And the space of Schwarz function is replaced by just little, little L2 of Z. So just the Euclidean space. So the spike is defi defined by the fact that it is zero everywhere, except in J, where it is one in J. The wave is the ordinary wave, it is a trigonometric function. The collection of spikes is the, uh, the standard basis of 
of the Hilbert space H. And the, the same is true for the collection of waves. It is uh, uh, the Fourier basis of this uh, Euclidean space. So the Fourier coefficient of a, of a sequence, finite sequence, are the inner products between F and the waves. So if we just copy the definition of crystalline measure, of a crystalline measure, we write that a sum of spikes is a sum of waves. That exactly is the definition I gave before. And if lambda and F are Zn, uh, this is e e identity is trivial because you can take any coefficient alpha lambda, you obtain a vector that you can decompose in the Fourier domain. So alpha lambda are arbitrary and beta k are just the Fourier coefficients of the sequence alpha. So if lambda and f are the end, this is trivial. So the definition of crystalline measure in the discrete case is a solution to this problem when the, where the cardinality of lambda is much less than n and the same for capital F. So you have a sparse decomposition uh, a sparse sum of spikes, which is at the same time a sparse sum of waves. Is that possible? So to be more precise, we uh, impose the cardinality of lambda to be much less than capital N by a factor of beta, and the same for F, or you can think that N is extremely large and uh, the cardinality of lambda and the cardinality of F are a little O of N. So Dono and Stark prove the following beautiful theorem. We uh, call capital M the sum of the cardinality of lambda plus the cardinality of F, and they prove the following. If the product between these two cardinalities is strictly less than capital N, then the vector E lambda and W uh, K are linearly independent. So you cannot have a crystal. This is sharp because uh, it does not hold if the pro product is capital N, because the obvious counter example is a case where lambda equals Zn, and uh, for example, the cardinality of F is one one wave can be decomposed as some of spikes. So it is a very nice discrete uh, theorem. Therefore, if you have a discrete card, uh, crystalline measure, uh, you need the, uh, these, uh, the opposite inequalities as the product of the two cardinalities is larger than equal to one. And you want to impose that uh, the cardinality of lambda and the cardinality of Fn are much less than that. So this discussion leads to an interesting example where the two cardinalities are the square root of n. And then uh, you have uh, a, an example, which is a Poisson formula in the discrete situation. You, you assume that you start from a node, a large inte integer node, Capital N is the square of uh, N naught, and F and lambda are two arithmetical progressions. Then the sum of these spikes, of these capital N naught spikes, is the sum of uh, the waves, the corresponding waves. So now there is a beautiful theorem by Terence Tao. Terence Tao proves the following. If n capital N is a prime number, then the linear uh, relation between spikes and waves, the fact that the spikes and the, the sum of spikes is a sum of waves, implies 
that lambda, the cardinality of lambda and the cardinality of it are large. Here, the sum of the two cardinalities is larger than p. So when uh, n uh, is a prime, uh, the crystal measure cannot exist if we adopt the second definition. So the column stack is column stack is column stack is lemma says the following. So it is an example of a, a linear uh, relation between spikes and waves. The, he, uh, he proves that uh, there exists a non-trivial uh, signal supported by this arithmetic progression, one, one over eight capital N, two over eight, uh, up to seven uh, over eight. So, and the rules fully transformed. No, sorry. All the integers between n over eight and seven n. So the length is six n over eight, three, four. Whose fully transform is supported by the, the same uh, set. And this uh, would be wrong if you shrink a little bit lambda in the Fn. And using the simple observation, Colun Sakis constructed a non trivial crystalline measure, which is explicitly given in terms of this series. So it means that there is a nice relationship between the discrete situations, the discrete setting. And the context. Now uh, we uh, arrive to one of the most fascinating problems uh, in uh, classical harmonic analysis today. It is the following Let lambda and f be two locally finite sets. We say that the, cop the pair is a pair of uniqueness if the following property is satisfied. For any function f belonging to the Schwarz class, we have the following property. If f vanishes on lambda, and if the Fourier transform of f vanishes on capital F, then f is identically zero, which means that for knowing exactly f, it suffices to sample f on lambda, so to collect the values taken by f on lambda, and the Fourier transform on f. The, of course, the, the knowledge of f on lambda does not suffice to retrieve f. This lack of knowledge is compensated by the information given by the Fourier transform. So this is uh, uh, the definition of a pair of uniqueness. If lambda f is a pair of uniqueness, any Schwarz function is uniquely defined by this restriction to lambda and by the restriction of, of its Fourier transform to f. We we will give examples. Of course, there are no classical examples. The only examples are very very recent. One assumes, uh, one assumes that uh, the number of points uh, of lambda in a ball of radius j is polynomial in j for some exponent. In all the examples, it is satisfied. And that the distance between two points uh, inside this ball exceeds g to the, j to the minus m for some exponent m. So that's a very natural uh, assumption in this problem. Then the restriction to lambda of the space of Schwarz function is exactly the space of sequences indexed by lambda, which have a fast decay to infinity, the same for f. And what we want to know is one step further. We want from the restriction of f to lambda and the restriction of the f hat to capital F to get back f by a bilinear operator. That will, we, we will achieve in the main theorem. So the main theorem in one dimension 
has been obtained by Marina Biazowska and her collaborators. And she solved this problem, assuming that the sparse function is an even function, and lambda and f are just a sequence of plus minus one the square root of k of all the integers. If f equals lambda equals z, of course, it is absolutely wrong. You have plenty of Schwarz functions that vanishes on z and whose Fourier transform vanish on z. It is trivial to construct comparison. You need uh, sequences which are more dense than the integers. So if lambda f is a pair of uniqueness, every temporal distribution can be written as a series of spikes located on lambda <coughs> and a series of waves with frequency beyond k. You have this beautiful uh, formula if you have a pair of uniqueness, and it implies that for every u, uh, the measure which is uh, Dirac mass uh, at u minus this uh, series uh, associated with u, is a crystalline measure, it is immediate. So it is uh, related to crystalline measures, and uh, um, uh, it is a beautiful way to construct new crystalline measures. So it is a, a second family of crystalline measures which have been obtained by Marina Vyazowska. So uh, the, the beautiful theorem uh, which uh, let me uh, jump over that. Let me re rewrite the theorem by Marina Vyazowska, which is a beautiful contribution. So she proves the following, and uh, she's using the theory of modular functions. So we are close to algebraic geometry to prove this theorem. The proof is, is, is gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. There exists a sequence AK of X of even real, real valued Schwarz functions of the real variable X with the property that for any even Schwarz function F and for any real number X, we have the following identity. It is a beautiful identity because uh, this, this sequence is completely explicit. AK is explicit, and the Fourier transform of AK is explicit. It is computed through the theory of modular functions. So every Schwarz function F is the sum from zero to infinity of AK of X, the values of F at the point square root of K, plus the sum from zero to infinity, the Fourier transform ak hat of x, the Fourier transform of f as the square root of k. So it is a, a super Fourier formula, which is valid for a, any Schwarz function. So it is something absolutely new, completely new in analysis, a new identity. It is just, just a, a splendid like like the expansion of uh, the exponential function or something like that. It is a new fact in mathematics. So, uh, and the right hand side converts uniformly to F and uh, also in the distributions. And uh, this cannot be true if F is odd. You take the function, the following function, sine of pi x squared divided by the hyperbolic sign of pi x. So this is an odd function, and it is a, it is a counterexample since g vanishes on plus or minus one square root of k, and the Fourier transform of g is minus i g. So the Fourier transform vanishes on the same point in such a way that you cannot have this formula you cannot have this formula because you would get zero here as the right hand side, and you, the function t is not identically zero. That is the reason of this even. 
But if you want uh, a pair of uniqueness, then the corollary of her theorem is very easy. You take four lambda, the sequence of plus or minus one plus k, and uh, for f, you just take three copies of lambda, lambda plus zero plus or minus one. Then it is a pair of uniqueness. Okay, so I will stop here. I will leave the uh, problem of uh, pack, packing of balls, the uh, uh, optimal packing of balls with radius uh, one. This problem can be raised in any dimension. And here is an example. So it is in dimension three here that you pack oranges. And uh, the solution of the packing of balls in dimensions eight and 24 is a, an application of the pre previous theorem here. So I will stop here because I am far away from uh, the interest of uh, Enrique. And since I began my career as a professor in high school, so the first thing that he, a professor of high school should do is to stop his class when uh, the ring tells that the classes should stop. And I, will tra I, am, I am trained that way. And that's the reason I stop now. Thanks, Enrique. Gracias por todo lo que has dado a Thank uh, very much, uh, uh, Professor Mayer, for his wonderful talk. So if there are questions, please go ahead. Yeah, so, so some of the, of the works, uh, well, when I met uh, for the first time in the 80s, Eve, he, he had made some very beautiful results on, uh, together with uh, Estefan Jafar, who, who is one of his PhD students, more or less my age, and a very good friend. Eve <clears throat> uh, had results showing that there are solutions of wave equations that can remain zero on a point for a very long time and then suddenly wake up like a, a levitation uh, 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 phenomena, right? So if this kind of results in which you can somehow design uh, the space-like support and the, and the Fourier support of solution of functions, which seems to be a bit uh, in contradiction with what one expects in according to the uncertainty principle, do you think could be used to design a specific types of, of waves uh, when thinking on the D'Alembert operator in space-time? Yeah, you, it is a very beautiful question. We did that with Ildefonso Diaz y Diaz. So we related the construction of crystalline measures to the properties of uh, the wave equation in dimension three. So there is a very nice uh, relationship, and uh, you you are absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. So I will I will send you the paper uh, with Thank you. Alfonso. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Very good point. It's a very good point. It means that uh, one is always winding around the same point. You know the work by Jaffar uh, forty years ago is now. Uh, 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 jumping again, you know, in my interest in crystalline measures. So the point um, in studying crystalline measure was uh, renewed. It was, uh, the problem was raised by Andrew Guinan, but uh, uh, it was renewed by the theory of quasi-crystals and people were wondering what was the relation between Guinan, Guinan's work and um, uh, Alexander Olevsky was a point, uh, was a person who renewed the interest in crystalline measures. So my work is a kind of collaboration with uh, Alexander Olevsky. So thanks for the question. Merci. Yeah, there's question by, probably by Carlos and then Gunther, so please. Okay, so and, thank you very much, Eve, for such a marvelous, uh, talk, uh, which is able to combine 
fundamental areas in mathematics, you have been able to combine uh, distributions with uh, number theory and uh, other areas of mathematics, which are all of them very important. Uh, in Tao's theorem, which is the role of the fact that n has to be prime? Uh, uh, in, in, uh, in Tao's work, it is crucial. Uh, otherwise, uh, his theorem, his theorem uh, is not true. Uh, the fact that uh, capital N is a prime is only uh, important in the theorem by Terence Tao. Uh, if uh, a capital N is not a prime, the theorem by Terence Tao is, uh, you have uh, obvious counterexamples. In the theorem by Dono, you do not need that uh, capital N be a prime. It is for any integer. So it is only in the theorem by Terence Tao. Okay, thank you. And my second question concerns this uh, Kulonsaki's lemma. Yes. Which I have a, maybe a different regard as the one you show here. I look it as an inverse problem in the sense that you measure F and F hat in this uh, sets lambda and uh, capital F. Yes. And you try to recover F. Yes. And the lemma says that you have a solution in the Schwartz, in the family of Schwartz uh, functions. So in no, very- no, You are in the discrete case. So uh, you have only a little L2 of, uh, uh, capital N. Uh, in, uh, in the lemma of Kolunsakis, you are in the discrete situation. So Schwarz does not mean anything, you know. You do not have decay at infinity. You are on uh, uh, the ring of integers modulo N. So uh, what um, the problem that uh, uh, Kolunsakis, Kolunsakis solves is the following. You, you have two small sets, modulo n, lambda okay. and f, and you want a non-trivial function supported by lambda whose Fourier transform is supported by, by capital f. f. So it is a kind of uncertainty principle, you know. So uh, this discussion, I should have said that, turns around the Heisenberg uh, principle that a function cannot be supported by a set which is too small and at the same time its Fourier transform be supported by a set which is too small. This is, imp is impossible. If a function is supported by a small set, its Fourier transform needs to be supported by a large set. So okay. the, the game is to, shrink, is to shrink as much as possible the support of a function and the support of its Fourier transform. And that's the, the basic, one of the basic problems in this construction of uh, crystalline measures. Okay, many thanks. Uh, you. So thank for, thanks for the question because it helps clarifying uh, the problem. Eve, I have a question just out of curiosity. Is you, at yes. the beginning, you mentioned the work of, of Pavel Kurasov uh, on quantum graphs, which I yes. know pretty well. Uh, so what is, in, and I think you mentioned that uh, this is in particular connected to trees. Um, yes. Can you elucidate a little bit uh, the connection to, to quantum graphs? And I, I see the same. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. what, why it is called uh, quantum graphs? No, That's no, I don't. I, I know that. This is this oh, is yes. not the problem. What is the what is the relation to the crystalline measures? Oh yes, 
The mm. relation is, is extremely elegant. It is beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there, there is a series of theorem telling that if you have a compact rim and surfaces, the length of closed geodesics is given by the spectrum of the Laplacian. Mm -hmm. And that a, a beautiful theorem, which has been proved by Duistermatt and Chazarin. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And, and uh, the, the proof is based on the fact that if you take the sum of the Dirac measure based on the length of closed geodesics, its Fourier transform is exactly the sum of Dirac measures supported by the square root of uh, uh, minus lambda k, where lambda k is the spectrum of the Laplacian, but you have plus an integral term. Mm -hmm. So I asked Colin Verdier if there were some examples where this integral term would disappear. And if you, have, if you are in the uh, Riemann surface setting, it is just impossible. You have always this integral term. So you, have, mm -hmm. so you, do, you cannot have a crystalline measures playing with the Duistermatt Chazarin theorem. And Kurasov, who was, who was working already in uh, Russia on the quantum graphs, had the splendid idea that if you have these quantum graphs, the, simply this integral term does not exist. So he obtained for free you know, mm -hmm. crystalline measures that way. The only point is uh, to fix the tree in such a way that you can compute explicitly these uh, lengths of closed geodesics and uh, the spectrum of the Laplacian. So uh, his a source of inspiration was quantum graphs and the adaptation of the chazarin duis dermat theory, mm -hmm. a beautiful relation. But uh, what, what is even more beautiful is that there is a set of uh, a formula in number theory called the riemann weil uh, formulas, which relate uh, the sum of Dirac masses on uh, the uh, prime numbers mm -hmm. to the sum of Dirac masses of, of the logarithms of uh, integers. So you have mm -hmm. this explicit formula, but you have an integral term in such a way that the theory of crystalline measures plays with this, is uh, contiguous, is close to this magnificent theory of the Chazarin and Wiesnerma formula and the applications to number theory, which was, which are the riemann weil formula. Thank you so thanks, thanks for your question. I, I, I have to say that I admire very much your work. Yeah, uh, you, uh, you talk. Uh, yeah, I oh, listen to you. <laughs> and uh, okay. I found it uh, beautiful. And uh, um, uh, I, I used to work with uh, Pierre Mignons. So uh, uh, the, the, the mention of his work uh, was uh, uh, warm to my heart. Okay, very good. Thank you so much. Because we also work with Sergei Avdonin on the inverse problem for the quantum graphs, right? So you detect. <laughs> In fact, a tree structure, right? <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you for your question. This is a question by Mahamadi. Uh, uh, yeah, Eve, thank you very much. And uh, well, I'm not at the level to say that uh, judge your talk because you know you are extremely. Uh, you are our mentor, you know. But uh, I have uh, only two. The first one is really. Maybe not related to the talk, but uh, you know more the traveling waves. And uh, I always wonder because every time I teach to, to my undergraduate student the wave equation, I write them the D'Alembert formula, okay? Mm -hmm. That work nice, that can make derivative, and they do that. But uh, since few years, I've been thinking if you replace the Laplacian with the fractional Laplacian, I still have a self algen operator, we know we have a D'Alembert formula, but I cannot tell them. What is the real candidate to 
to have a formula like the Dalander, do I don't know if you already think about it and that if you have a candidate for a Dalander formula for the flat, if you replace the, La the Laplace with the fractional. Okay, I will think about it. And, uh, <laughs> thank, thanks for your question. Uh, up to now, I, uh, I cannot answer, but uh, I will think about it. Okay, my second question, but well, I'm not uh, so familiar with the with the the thing, but uh, from dimension eight to twenty four, what is the next one that will be critical? Yeah, the point is that it is not from dimension eight to twenty four. It is mm -hmm. only in dimension eight and dimension mm -hmm. twenty four, because um, um, in these two cases, one has some. Uh, candidates for mm -hmm. the densest packing of oranges. Uh -huh, of course, uh -huh. we, we are not interested in oranges. In yeah, the, yeah, the, the, spark, the sparkling scale or, or bowel. Yes, or this. In yeah, the, yeah. Uh, uh, I spent all, all my youth in uh, Tunis, and in mm -hmm. Tunis we had uh, some marvelous oranges which were called sweet oranges, oranges mm -hmm. which were not acid. Sweet, yeah. absolutely yeah. sweet, and uh, I've never uh, found that anywhere else. But I, I like these oranges. So, uh, oranges, oranges for 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 me is warm, warm to my heart. Okay, so uh, you have two uh, lattices, one in dimension eight and one in twenty-four, which are very very specific, which are called lek lattices and which uh, provides the densest packing of balls. And uh, uh, Marina proved that in both cases, uh, and she proved that using uh, these, uh, her, work, her work on crystalline measures. So the explicit formula she obtained for crystalline measures. And she proved that these packing, which were already known before, uh, are the densest one. But uh, uh, the problem is open in a general dimension, you know. And it okay. is also open intermediate dimension between 8 and 24. Ah, so, okay. Now she obtained several prizes for this fantastic work. And now mm -hmm. she's a professor at uh, Ecole Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne. She, she ah, got okay. a yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. If there are no questions, I maybe a few comments. I mean, also, I'm quite uh, an outsider to this uh, area, but it's very interesting to me. So, um, so as you mentioned, I think after uh, Carlos' comments that the the result of Dono uh, and Sarnak is some kind of uncertainty principle. And so in some sense that it's now an uncertainty principle on the support of the, uh, the function and its Fourier transform in some sense, is that it? I do, I do not know exactly, no, no, no. no. Uh, did you hear my question? No. No, the point is that the telephone was ringing, so I stopped the telephone. <laughs> and uh, please repeat yeah. your question. Yeah, no, I was saying, uh, so the result which you began in the beginning, I mean, the result of Dono and Stark. Uh, yes. So it's a kind of uncertainty principle uh, yes, on, the on, the of... Support, on the support of the, the yes. function and its Fourier transform. Yes, you are right. All yeah. these results, are quantitative, very precise, quantitative versions of the uncertainty principle, of Heisenberg principle. So uh, they say, all these results say that the function cannot be supported by yeah. a small set, and at the same time, its Fourier transform be supported by a small set. And uh, G is impossible. The only uh, case is that the function vanishes identically. Mm -hmm. So that's what. Uh, yeah. So, and uh, of course, in Dono, 
the relation, so the, the precise relation is that the product of the cardinality of lambda times the cardinality of f uh, shall be larger than or equal to n to uh, obtain non-trivial function carried by lambda whose uh, Fourier transform is carried by a capital F. So it is a, a, a necessary condition for finding uh, a non-trivial function carried by lambda whose Fourier transform is carried by F is that the product of the two cardinality shall exceed capital N. In, um, in uh, Terence Tao theorem, it is more precise. It is if and on if. Mm -hmm. While in Dono, it is just one way. You need large yeah. support, either of the function or of the Fourier transform, to have lo uh, localization on the two sides. Yeah, thank so, you. Um, so uh, one more question maybe. Recently I, I, I uh, listened to some lectures in harmonic analysis and it reminds me of some things which they were talking about on Heisenberg unique pairs. So this is a special kind of uh, Heisenberg uniqueness pair or? Yes, yes, it is, it yeah. is related. It, uh, I have to, to, to come back to the definition of this Heisenberg unicity set, but it is exactly the same circle of ideas, you know. It is okay. all around Heisenberg, you're right. Okay. Uh, Heisenberg uncertainty, but it yeah. is in the discrete setting. So uh, we are not uh, very familiar to, the, to Heisenberg in the discrete setting, but there are a lot of uh, very mm -hmm. nice results. Uh, for example, uh, uh, Joel Trop, uh, who is a student of uh, Emmanuel Candace, I think, uh, studied the case of uh, random sets, you know. So he took uh, for lambda a random set of integers modulo n, so a random discrete set of, of uh, cardinality p, and for capital F, another random set, and he studied the relation between the, cardinal, the average cardinality of the two sets in order to have a Heisenberg principle. So there are, uh, now there are a lot of study, and the reason why is the interest of this problem in signal processing. Uh, a function, uh, for example, if you, if you, you have a mixture, uh, a mixture of wavelets, which are localized like spikes and waves. Can you separate the wavelets and the waves? It is um, related to the problem of uh, a signal plus noise. You have a mixture uh, of uh, this problem uh, arose for example, is the detection of gravitational waves. The problem of detection of gravitational waves was to find a signal which was a chirp. A, a chirp is a frequency modulated signal plus noise. And uh, the problem was that is the chirp, uh, can be the chirp be confused with the noise or is a chirp a signal which is distinct uh, from noise uh, to find the hidden structure of a signal which is corrupted by noise. That was a problem of, of detecting gravitational waves. And so the circle of ideas about mixture, can you have mixture or do you have separation? Is a, a problem which is crucial in signal processing. But of course, uh, these examples on uh, integers modulo capital N are just toy examples. It is the beginning of something. Thank you. I 
guess there are no more questions. So, um, so, uh, it so happens that the next speaker is not available and uh, we could start the session in a few minutes. The, I, mean, I mean, the next talk in a few minutes. Uh, or meaning if anyone wants to like interact more with you, we could leave you time for that. But but I'm really impressed. And I think it meaning to be with such people and especially like people like you and, and some to some, some extent with Enrique who were able to like meaning uh, do uh, interesting mathematics, which which is like hard, pure, and at the same time, like, as far reaching contributions or applications. So, yeah. Thank you very much for these kind yeah. words. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, as uh, I have sent to the chat, I strongly recommend the article by Eve uh, uh, under the title For My Mother, where he explains his own vision of uh, somehow all his intellectual, uh, you know, interest when he was younger in which he was divided in between literature and, and mathematics and then how somehow you know talking to friends interacting with people he was driven in this initial path of uh, you know different fields in mathematics and it's very nicely done so felicitaciones if ese artículo me pareció particularmente bonito eh? gracias and, uh, enrique yeah. y gracias por todo no, Gracias and, por uh, todo lo, yeah. lo que has hecho. Gracias, Gracias. a ti. Andre. Gracias a ti. Seguiremos. Ok, un abrazo. So, thank you. Thank you all. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Rajech, there is, an, there is an email sent by Gustavo Perla uh -huh. that I forwarded it to you. Oh, I haven't seen it. I will check right now. It is in your WhatsApp. Okay. Okay. So Gustavo, he has been uh, seeing his uh, medical doctor, who told him that uh, he's not uh, in good condition for giving a talk. In particular, uh, as you may know, he's over seventy, <coughs> and he cannot move from home to his office at the. <laughs> LMCC. So <coughs> he's not going to be able to, to, to give his talk. Uh, are you reading the email? <coughs> I, I am reading the, uh, the message in my WhatsApp, yes. Yes. So he He's sending a huge to, uh, embrace to, to to embrace Enrique. Enrique. Yes. yes, and also um, wishing him many more years, at least forty years more of research. Yes, <laughs> he had, he his health is not going well, very well. So yeah, yeah Gustavo is an to, old friend, and uh, yeah, to get in touch have, with you yeah. by via WhatsApp. But he, he said, he told me that he was not able to do it. Okay, no problem. I will send, I will call him tomorrow. Hopefully he will be better tomorrow. So I will talk to him. Yeah, Gustavo okay. is uh, an old friend for many years. And uh, yeah, recently, yeah, life got uh, unexpectedly complicated for him. Yeah. And, uh, the COVID situation in Brazil is not very good at the same time. Definitely not. Oui, bien sûr. Que je réponde aux questions, c'était horrible. And he, he needs to take the bus to go to his office. And this seems to be very dangerous. So maybe we can continue with uh, Dominic. Voilà. Yeah. What do you so think? Then, Hasta luego, the next... Hasta luego, Yves. Bye, Yves, and thank you very Bye. much again. Thank you, Yves. Merci. So the next speaker uh, in this session is Dominic Ruiz Ballet. Uh, 
He's from the Universidad Autónoma de Madrid in Spain. And um, he's a PhD student and he earned his bachelor's degree on maths and physics at the news at the Universidad Autónoma de Barcelona and master's degree in applied math in Erasmus Mundus program in the Universidad de Aquila and University of Hamburg. He's currently doing his PhD in control theory under the supervision of Enrique. So invite uh, Dominic to talk, give his talk, which is titled Asymptotic Behavior of Models in Elasticity and Fruit, some results with no, is it? Uh, no, I'm, I'm not sure if it's the oh. right title. So, constraint no. control in reaction diffusion equation, it seems. I'm sorry for the mistake. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I don't have permissions to share my screen. Okay, yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you everyone. So um, my talk will be about constant control interaction diffusion equations. Um, first of all, we will be focusing on uh, a bistable reaction diffusion equation. So we will we can settle last in, in this setting, in this uh, particular nonlinearity in u1 minus u y minus theta. Uh, the dynamical system, the one dimensional dynamical system associated, what it does in this nonlinearity is every point what, that is above uh, theta. It's, it's, it's uh, pushed to one, and uh, any point that is uh, below theta, it's pushed to, to zero. So, and this model can be modeling um, proportions, for it can come from evolutionary game theory or mo modeling also in certain things in, in mathematical biology. But the, the important fact is that the, the state preserves naturally the, the constraints between zero and one, which, the, which, is, which are natural for, for the quantities that they represent. And we I want to basically con to study controllability properties of that equation from through a control A in the boundary so that the, the quantities preserve their meaning. So, so, the, so we, we want to require a control A, which is uh, between zero and one. And now we can ask ourselves to, to settle the question, can, can we control to, for example, the, the steady states uh, zero, the constant state state zero, theta, or one in a way that the whole trajectory of the system uh, is preserves the, 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 the bilateral bounds. So um, we will be talking on uh, for these three steady states, but one may also be thinking on on certain on, on the paradigms of steady states that are in the in the interior of the of the miserable set, but they are not stable. Or or, uh, or what or, or what situations that can arise in which st uh, steady states that are in the boundary of the admissible set which are stable or, or not stable, and but we will be focusing on particular examples. But some of the principles may, may apply for for a wide variety of city of steady states. So first thing uh, that we will have to mention is that so we will settle in the case of uh, theta uh, the, this parameter theta to be less than one half and. That the, the first situation is that there, that we cannot always achieve this con the, the controllability. The reason is the, the, the comparison principle. If a solution to this uh, semi-linear elliptic equation exists, then by the comparison principle, if we start for initial data which is equal to one, we will never be able to, to reach a zero. Moreover, if a, a solution of this elliptic equation exists, uh, its maximum is above theta. So, we will not be able to, to drive any solution that starts, for, for instance, from one to, to the steady state theta. And how this, uh, the solutions of this uh, similar elliptic equation can be understood. So that you can, uh, one can write the, the energy difference formulation and one can see that when uh, mu is uh, very big, the convex part dominates and one has uh, a, a, a unique critical point which is associated with a steady state zero. However, when the mu is, uh, is decreasing, the, this other part starts to play a, a role and one may observe that the other critical points appear and, mount, uh, and also mountain passes. So, and these this, uh, critical points will fulfill the, these, these, uh, these equations and, uh, and, and will act as a barrier. So we will get a negative uh, result for the full controllability. We cannot, there exists a steady state, uh, there exists exist initial data that cannot be driven 
to to theta and moreover we'll, we can they can never be reached exactly to zero because of the maximum principle but we can never ne neither approach it and uh, what happens the same situation would arise if we would have the non-trivial state stage with the boundary value one however for for this case in which uh, theta is lower than one half uh, one has the the, the, the state states uh, around one uh, uh, the, the state the state state one is unique is, is unique the this situation can be seen from the sense of the traveling waves so how can uh, which tools can can we have for for controlling in uh, in, in this setting so one of the one important tool is the, the staircase method so the staircase method essentially tells you that if you have two steady states which are admissible and uh, you have a continuous and admissible path connecting them you can control sequentially from uh, you can take a finite sequence of elements of, of, of this path and you can con control sequentially from one state to another so that the L infinity bounds are present so and and this is would be the the, the the main tool for for controlling so but this uh, this this here we, we have to emphasize two things so, uh, the first thing is that uh, the the t the, the time needed for control it has to be large and this is a feature which is um, part, uh, the specific for the for the constraint setting. So and uh, and the other and the other feature is that we need to construct this path of, of path of steady states. So um, a, a way to construct the path of steady states we can set up first in the in the one dimensional case. So we can understand uh, we need to find uh, controls, different values of controls, so that the solution the, the, the family of solutions is continuous and connects. For instance, the, the steady state uh, zero with the steady state theta. So, and and this can be done by uh, writing this uh, elliptic, uh, elliptic equation boom, as an ODE system. So, when we write the, this as an ODE system, what do we have? We have that the steady state zero would correspond to the point zero zero. This point here, the state theta, uh, steady state theta would correspond to the theta zero. This uh, center here. And uh, state state one would be in, at this extreme here. So, and this black curve here that goes from zero to zero, this is a homoclinic orbit, is uh, an, an, an elliptic solution in the whole R, in, in the whole space R. So, and observe that here, this for the dynamical for the dynamical system, all the uh, points that are enclosed by this homoclinic orbit, they, they, they will they remain always there. So, it, this is an invariant region. And uh, this uh, this can be used uh, for, uh, for 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 building paths of a steady state by using the the continuity of the the ODE with respect to the initial data to construct paths that uh, connect to one one state to another. So, for instance, we can con one can control from, one can put here a, a, a family of initial conditions, and then solve the, the equation until the, the target is region. Here one, one, one may say one, one may see the, the representation in the, from, from going from zero to theta. So now the, the, the staircase method would tell you that you can control, you can jump from one state to another sequentially until you arrive to, to this final steady state. So and how, how can we do it for, for, for in several dimensions? One may uh, as well ex extend the, extend your domain and make use that we are using control in the whole boundary to to, to basically uh, come back to, to 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 a radial solution and uh, one may, may may also may also see that for radial solutions since they dissipate one can also um, build a, a continuous path of a steady state that connects zero from to theta so and but now we have just constructed a path. So the other thing would be to be able to attach that path. So we have we know that inside this invariant region, one can mm, basically to try to use the the, the the phase plane to to connect uh, to connect steady states. But we sh we should be able to reach this the, the this 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 invariant region. And we know also that since bar bar barriers can can exist, we might not be able to to access to that to that. So uh, a way to um, to try to understand what uh, the controllability to the steady state theta could be equivalent to would be to to define this uh, set uh, a which is the the basing of attraction of zero so basically we put control zero and we uh, and we look all initial data whose omega limit is exactly this zero so and 
the, the, the thing we have is that the, to control, to, to be able to control two theta is equivalent to, uh, be, uh, to that the, your initial data belongs to, to, this, uh, to this A. So, and this is the one, one of my theorems. So if we, we, we use, have that the primitive of F is uh, bigger than zero, which is, corresponds to be theta less than, than one half, barriers can exist. So the, when the barrier exists, uh, our set A is uh, is not is not the whole set uh, all, all the whole admissible set. When and when the um, when you have a point that is not uh, when, when you have a, when mu is uh, is a small is a small enough and a barrier exists, one has also that the the controllability times are uh, are not uniform in the in, in this set. So, um, so as I, as I have said, if uh, you if you not belongs to the Bayesian attraction of zero, then it's controllable to zero and vice versa. Also, one may observe that when you, when we're using the staircase method, the two when two paths are two state states are connected. It's the same to control. Well, it's the same. It's equivalent. You, you one can con if one can control from the first state, steady state to the second, and also from the second to the first. Mm, and also that, uh, but th this existence of parts, it's uh, a, a thing that has to be constructed uh, by hand and not all, they, all non, they don't always exist. So you can put two steady states, one that is above the, the barrier and one steady state that is close to zero. So we know since the traveling ways go, go to one, we can always approach one and then control to this steady state, but you cannot go uh, in the other way around. And they cannot exist also a path of state states because since you get, there is the barrier, it, you, you would, uh, one would get a contradiction. So uh, what I have mentioned before the, uh, is uh, an example of an irreversible control process. We can control from uh, the steady state that is, is near zero to a steady state that's close to one, but not vice versa. And, uh, and and this also shows some limitations on the on the staircase method. So we there there we, there there is a need also to to develop a new new methods to to guarantee controllability in such cases. To and uh, okay and here I'm gonna put in an, in another setting in which we have um, an uh, an special heterogeneous uh, reactional diffusion equation. This this model comes from thinking on U uh, that, that use a proportion. Uh, and then is a, 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 the population. So we have a population and we have a proportion, let's say, of the people who has blue eyes and the people that don't have blue eyes. So, and this, uh, and this uh, proportion is, is, is diffusing, is diffusing along this proportion. And this is a model, it's called the gen flow. Uh, the, uh, and we are gonna try to understand what, what, what is the impact of this heterogeneity to, to, to the controllability properties. So first of all, I will, I will show some simulations in two cases. So first, in which we have a, a, the, the population N is a Gaussian. This could correspond to have a drift term that is pushing to the boundary. And uh, we observe that, the, okay, the, and, and intuitively this drift is uh, going against our boundary control. And, and we see that as, as, we, as one over sigma, this parameter one over sigma increases, the controllability time blows up. Whereas uh, when uh, we have this other case in which we have this uh, um, exponential x squared over sigma, the, the control action is enhanced by, by, by the drift. And uh, we observe that the minimal controllability time goes to, goes to zero. But what is it happening here in the case of the Gaussian? What, uh, how can we explain this um, apparent uh, blow up of the minimal controllability time? And uh, this is uh, because uh, a barrier exists. So there exists a, a, a barrier for uh, the steady, to reach the steady state one, even if the theta here is below one half. And here we have this uh, blocking phenomena to, to, to reach the steady state one. And this, since, since the, this solution cannot correspond in a minima, uh, a minimal to a minimal energy of the functional, it's a saddle point we, we used uh, a shooting method to, to prove the, this existence. So, and, okay. So, and a, a final, final remarks here would be that, um, so if I, if I also de now define the, the vision of attraction of one and the vision of attraction of zero, is it true that if two steady states 
uh, belong to this both basing of attraction there exists a path between one and the other this would this is a conjecture that uh, I, I would uh, like to check to be able to guarantee the existence of paths without being able to construct them without constructing them explicitly so um, and uh, another uh, case to show more limitations of um of, of, of the of the methods that we, that we have right now is in another this other case in which I'm considering the same problem but with uh, a mu of t that the, it's the, it's decreasing. So in that case we don't have a steady states essentially when we have the the constant steady states, the zero steady state, the theta steady state and the one steady state. but uh, so we cannot have paths. And, uh, we and, 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 and we observe that uh, well, this is uh, numerical simulations uh, show that also uh, some sort of obstruction can, can occur. So if we put a, a mu of t that is decreasing, the, here the initial data is zero and I want to control to theta, I'm not able to, to reach theta, where, but if the exponent is a bit lower, in, I, can, I can succeed to do so. Uh, so, and here I have put some of the references that uh, have been for, the, for this talk. And uh, thank you very much. And Sonia Yannick Enrique. Thank you, Dominic, for the nice talk. So, if there are people who would like to ask you questions, so please go ahead. I hope. There's some questions. So in your opinion, Dominic, I mean, we, we have been working on this topic for a number of years. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if, if you have to advise to someone that wants to work on this in this context of control of uh, rational diffusion models arising in math, biology, and social sciences, uh, what will be the, the topic you will recommend to, to look at? Um, so mainly these two things, these two things here, to see first if there is a way to not, uh, another method to control with constraints without passing through steady states, or a way to guarantee existence of path of steady states without constructing them, such as this uh, conjecture here with the basis of attractions. And uh, on the other, uh, on the other hand, like, uh, the non uh, systems that are non-autonomous, the, because uh, we, it, it also shows uh, that uh, we need also more um, uh, other methodologies to, to, to address uh, this, uh, these control problems. So this would be first the, the first steps. And then from this on, one may build also to, to go to, to systems. There's a question. Yeah, in the modeling context, there is also there are some also discussions at the modeling level to which extent you you need systems or you can, for instance, when two populations are coexisting, whether you need to write a system, right, one equation per population, or you can just write one single equation for the say the volume ratio or uh, I mean the the proportion of populations, right. So there are interesting. Uh, uh, limit processes for the Kochi problems, right? So, so do you think this could be also uh, something to be analyzed from a control perspective? So the link between systems and scalar equations maybe at this level? Yes, also the CS, how can we, uh, how can the tools from uh, scalar can be transferred to systems, for instance, if we try to, to develop the same techniques for, for systems with the phase plane, we it's uh, the dimension increases uh, it starts to increase a lot. So to guarantee invariance of uh, invariant regions or analysis there, it's uh, it starts to be more complicated. Also, easily you jump to dimensions higher than three. So um, I think that is a it's a it's a it's a need also to to even to even develop other other methods. Thank you, Dominic. Oh, uh, sorry, Mahamadi, please go yeah. ahead. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dominic, for the, the talk. Uh, a few questions. Uh, the first one: What is the regularity you put on your directly control? 
uh, on the direct control. It's uh, yeah. just taking uh, L infinity, L infinity in, uh, in space, in L infinity, space time, in mean, the boundary. Well, 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 well. But if we take the Dirichlet problem, even the elliptic one, and uh, you put only L infinity on, uh, well, let's say even the elliptic, forget in space, it's forget in time. You put the L infinity solution, what you have, you will have only solution by transposition. You can even no longer assume existence of weak solution because solution will be only by transposition because they are very, very weak, yes? Hmm. Then, uh, well, then you say I put L infinity, then you have very, very weak solution, yes? Very weak with solution, even for the, the linear case, is very complicated to deal. This means that solution by transposition. Well, but uh, well, I know Enrique know the, the topic very good, how he can deal with that. But uh, you start with the KPP. You start with the, the non-linearity. You start with the, like a KPP equation, yes? Uh, the, well, uh, this is uh, uh, not KPP, but I started with uh, this. Uh, by yeah, statement. one minus U, theta minus U is, is a kind of KPP, yes? It's not uh, far yeah. from that, yes? And, uh, by stable, yeah. But uh, your result all for for a non-linearity that like you, uh, you know, uh, like u power p that uh, you can uh, you can uh, determine determine what kind of p that you can have this result because the KPP uh, is is very very is very special, you know. Uh, well, this we well the the results are for uh, f uh, by stable or. Or monostable, we use also that you have uh, that there are critical points in of f in zero and one. To, yeah, to that's not the problem. You can have yeah. a, if you, you can even take a monotone nonlinearity. It's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. but, uh, so that there but is my, no blow up of solution when you start and uh -huh. you're not admissible. There is no no blow up of solution. Mm, so that you don't have the problem that okay, that even even in zero control, you should uh, deal with the fact that the solution can blow up. Mm -hmm. So this is not uh, here in that case is not an issue, uh, and uh, and the targets also well the targets also are in the are const are, are the constant steady states which are very regular, uh, more, uh, and moreover the the main thing here to use is the staircase method, which uh, can be found uh, here in this reference here below. Yeah, yeah, that is good. But uh, my last question, you you say that the t mean goes to zero. What, what, what? Your last, uh, yeah, my last question, you say that T minimal goes to zero. Uh, well, yes, but this is because you, you gain a stability. Yes, this is, uh, but not, is not, but in, it depends on that parameter sigma. It's not, uh, wait, what is uh, it's not for only for any sigma. Then there are some parameter yeah. sigma parameter, that T yeah. mean it's goes. Positive. It's always positive. It's all for some parameter sigma, yes? It's a, it's a very special case with n of x uh, being like this and and the parameter one over sigma being very very large, but this is the similar uh, similar one as if you have a, a, like a, a diffusivity mu and you are increasing the, diffu the the diffusivity a lot and the first eigen value is uh, mm -hmm. is increasing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, then it depends from the parameter sigma. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Axel has a question, please, Axel. Yes, thank you, Dominic. I have a question, I was thinking about the model as, as yours, but with Neumann boundary conditions, maybe the nonlinearity could be a, be a stable equation or fits to Nagumo type, equa type equation. And I was thinking in, uh, what, what about problems of where the control is a parameter in the nonlinear function? For instance, this is important in the effect of drugs in the voltage propagation in the herd, for instance, or in classification problems where you want to, to know if there, there are majority of ones of zeros in an image, for instance. And, and in general, the control is not on the boundary or, or on the domain, but it's, it's a, the control is through the parameters of the nonlinear function. Do you know something? Or do you uh, think? Yeah. I mean, there is, there is a paper in from from Enrique Trella and uh, and Zhu 
in which they put a control here in the parameter theta. However, it's optimal control. They, they deal about the, the optimal control problem to, to travel in ways with uh, having the, uh, this parameter as a control. Uh, but uh, other, um, like with other parameters, the thing would be to know if there is uh, some sort of local controllability at least when, uh, you, when one is controlling a parameter in the nonlinearity, for instance. And uh, this, um, I, I think it should be very specific from the, uh, from the uh, nonlinearity considered. Okay, thank you. Yeah, any more questions? It seems no. So the next speaker should be Aurora, Marika, but uh, Gracias, we don't. Thank you. Actually, Domenech is defending his thesis in a few weeks in Autonoma. So we were very lucky to have him in our team uh, for three, four years. And uh, yeah, he has done fantastic work. So it was uh, a great pleasure to have uh, Domenech uh, von Catalunya. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Enrique. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, then the next speaker in this uh, session should be Aurora Marika, but I don't see her so far. And actually, since the program shifted, she's supposed to speak at uh, 3.35. And so there's still time, but I don't know how we should go about it. So is there a way to contact her and find out if she's going to connect? Her? I tried to contact her, but uh, she's not replying. Mm -hmm. So it we have be, to make a decision. Yeah, it would be a pity if she can't, she, if she doesn't know and she can't speak. So I don't know what Enrique, maybe Enrique knows better. So what is uh, Aurora is not, uh, is not showing up? Yeah, we don't hmm. see her, and, and I don't see her. if you can communicate with her and find out. I have, I think I have her cell uh, somewhere, but uh... hmm. the problem is too early. It, uh, she didn't supposed to talk at that time, and maybe she was taking a nap. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, actually, yeah. actually, Aurora is is very very busy because she has to teach a lot, right, in, in uh, mm. this Polytechnic University of Bucharest. So she's probably ending her teaching or so. I can give her a call, wash up, see what happens, but I'm not very optimistic that she will. Yeah, I was... We can have a social, to... a social meeting. I mail, but uh, she's not replying. Can have a social meeting waiting for her. <laughs> <laughs> One possibility is we could connect back again in half an hour and have a break for half an hour. And I don't but know. Half an hour is a long time. Okay. Yeah. have a social meeting we can discuss between us uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, 
mean while 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 we are waiting for Aurora. I just wish to express my pleasure at being at this conference. It's quite well organized and a good many interesting talks. So it's really a great tribute, I think, to Enrique. Hello? Yes? See? Okay, so I, I got a response from Aurora saying that she is there. So, but I mean, my question was ambiguous. I, I asked her, are you there? And she said, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> now we don't know what there means, right? <laughs> <laughs> we need her in Zoom, not uh, somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So okay, I think now she has read great. my message. Uh, I have told her that uh, people are waiting. She's the last one and she should yeah, show up. Yes. Let's see whether she comes in Zoom. It's probably a good idea to have some small talk as Mahmadi suggested while we attend. So means wait for her. Maybe Enrique can answer to, to Gunta question, no? Okay. Enrique, there is one question of Gunta you didn't answer. How do you manage to have a lot of collaborator like this and uh, also a lot of publication you didn't have a two 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 paper with the same the same type how you manage <laughs> yeah well, how do you so... handle <laughs> domain decomposition methods <laughs> <laughs> exactly oh, but oh, i said oh. you know the, the important uh, uh, thing hello. is oh, hi, it's present huh? <laughs> the important oh, thing finally. is everybody's happy with that <laughs> Aurora is here. So this, yeah, in this way, I don't need to answer to this uh, confidential <laughs> question, right? I will not disclose okay. my secrets, right? <laughs> it's not, it's not yeah. the master slave paradigm. Right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So where is Aurora? Is she there? I see a screen launching of a Zoom. Is it normal? I am. Go ahead. Launch meeting. Okay, so Aurora is somewhere there, but uh, she appeared and she's now muted. She's... she's muted. Maybe she could talk. She's again she's trying to join. The apparently, list. she's she share a screen, but she's yeah. not yet. Uh, you see your screen or, or she could yeah or aurora are you there can you hear it's listed as as participant yeah no. okay now the micro is open so aurora are you there uh so uh can you uh yes, we yeah. can. okay uh so i i i thought that i i am at uh, nine o'clock <laughs> okay um no. yeah so we are glad that Aurora is here. And so she's the next speaker. And she will. Uh, she was a former student of uh, Enrique. And she's at the Universidad Poly Polytechnic University in Romania, I think in Bucharest. So 
she will talk on hardy inequalities for potentials with countable number of singularities please uh, aura you have the screen uh, but the screen we don't see your uh, but video and also We see you now, Aurora. Good. So, but uh, I I don't see how to to share my my slides. <laughs> Why well, you you just say uh, I mean here down you have share a screen and then you click there. Aurora, on the on the bottom bar, in la barra de abajo. You have the micro, you have the video, you have the participants, you have the chat, and then you share have screen. another a, an arrow saying share a screen or compartir pantalla in Spanish. I don't know which menu you have. Enrique, I I see from Aurora's uh, screen launch meeting. Mm. Okay, uh, so, now I. Okay. Oh, it's better. It's better now. The... Otherwise, you can send your slides to Rakesh, and uh, and then we can show them while you talk. No, but I I think now we we saw the the screen of uh, Oh, I think she she should follow what you said, Enrique. Yeah. Share the screen. Aurora, if you want, you can send the file by the chat and I can share screen from my computer and you can tell me when to proceed to the next slide so that's also possible yeah now it's ah, okay. okay now we see yep. great great so, so um i i will talk with some uh, about some uh, some work uh, um we did with uh, christian kazaku from university of uh, bucharest um and uh, before that uh i i will uh, tell you some some uh, some words about uh, hard inequalities with finite numbers of uh, of poles so hardy hardy inequalities um are um, of uh, this form so we have to to prove uh, that uh for example the integral of the laplacian is uh, greater than than some constant uh, uh times the integral of uh, a potential uh, and uh, uh, u square now uh, the, the uh, in some cases it, it is possible to prove also uh, to add uh, uh, an l to norm square of uh, of u um so um, uh, there are some cases about the potential v we we can have uh, potentials with uh, only one singularity uh, a potential with a finite number of singularity and the potential with um, countable number of singularities um and uh, the constant some constant uh, we can put here in uh, in the inequality the mu. Um, uh, there are some constants uh, which are optimal, so we can minimize. Uh, so they can minimize this uh, portion. Um, and uh, some uh, uh, the u minimizing these constants uh, uh, are calling. Um, are called uh, minimal uh, minimizing uh, uh, sequence, 
and uh, a minimizer is uh, 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 is some uh, is this uh, you we can put here to to uh, to attain this uh, um, minimal constant. Um, so um, there are some um, classical uh, um, results about uh, this Hardy inequality. So the best constant uh, here is uh, when um, zero is in the interior. So, uh, so the singularity here is uh, in the interior of uh, the domain. It is well known that the constant is uh, d minus two uh, square uh, divided by four. Um, now, uh, um, it is also possible uh, to have the singularity on uh, on the boundary, and uh, uh, there are uh, 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 there are results about this. Uh, so, um, uh, in some uh, in some uh, results, uh, um, new uh, studies. Uh, uh, belongs to, to this interval. And Chris um, Kazaku uh, proved that, um, in fact, um, the, um, the constant um, in, uh, in this case, when omega is convex, uh, is uh, d squared divided uh, by 4. Um, now, uh, about multipolar uh, potentials uh, with a finite uh, number of singularities, uh, there are uh, results of, uh, by Bostic, Dolbo, and Esteban in 2008, uh, uh, showing that uh, in uh, R2, in RD, uh, with uh, n singularities, this kind of uh, inequality uh, holds. Um, and uh, uh, in, um, uh, in uh, some work by Katsu uh, and in, uh, in uh, 2000. Um, it, so that, uh, uh, this is uh, the and um, this is uh, the best uh, constant, but it is not uh, attained. Uh, now, um, when um, the domain omega uh, is uh, bounded, uh, it can be shown that uh, the optimal constant uh, uh, mu star. Uh, is exactly uh, d minus uh, two square divided by n square, so n is the number of poles. Is if uh, n is equal to two, and uh, if uh, n is greater than uh, three, so there are uh, several singularities. Uh, the optimal constants uh, constant belongs to to this uh, interval. Um, uh, now, um, there are some other results by uh, Christie uh, showing that uh, in, in a ball, in the, uh, so if we uh, deal with um, particular geometry, um, in a ball, in the ex exterior of the ball or uh, in the half, half space, and uh, the poles are uh, located on the boundary of the domain, uh, one can show that uh, the optimal constant is uh, this one. Um, for uh, the ball in uh, in uh, R D, when uh, the number of uh, um, poles is uh, greater than uh, three, one can show that uh, this is in fact uh, the the minimizer. Um, now, uh, with countable number of, uh, of poles, uh, there is only one result by um, uh, uh, Feli, uh, Terracini, and uh, Marcini in uh, 2007, 
showing that um, uh, if um, we have some uh, some potential and some localization uh, in the potential, um, uh, we have uh, we can have this kind of uh, inequality. And uh, our goal is to uh, to treat uh, this kind of uh, potential. Uh, and uh, when uh, we can see that uh, this potential is not of uh, of the type uh, treated in 2007, um, and um, we can see also that. Um, uh, if we have more uh, singular poles, uh, the Hardy inequality uh, is uh, less and less. So if, if we have, if we add several poles, the Hardy inequality is um, is less. Um, now, um, uh, how uh, we can see that? So having the um, Hardy inequality, the classical one with uh, uh, poles in uh, in the interior. Uh, and uh, summing these uh, inequalities uh, for uh, uh, for uh, with them potentials, we can see that the constant uh, is of this form. And uh, if m, the number of uh, of poles, is uh, tends to to infinity, we see that uh, this constant tends to zero. So our goal is to to prove that. There, uh, there are um, uh, uh, other bounds uh, than uh, this one. Um, now, um, our potential is uh, uh, this one with um, the the poles uh, distributed on um, on um, on a line and uh, equidistributed on uh, on this line um, and. Uh, also, the, the domain is uh, is uh, some cylinder in uh, in the in the space, and um, uh, the potential uh, this potential uh, our proof is based on the fact that this kind of potential with equidistributed uh, poles can be also um, written in uh, in this uh, in this form. Um, it's some kind of uh, complex analysis um, uh, and uh, residual um, uh, issue. Um, okay, there are some um, some um, uh, relations between uh, um, between uh, some notations. So A is uh, is a sum of uh, of the variables, we have uh, a vector x in Rd, uh, and uh, with some is uh, component, and also this kind of uh, L2 norm of, uh, of the component. Um, we also uh, can prove that uh, our cylinders can be can be described in uh, in this form. Uh, so uh, uh, the row can be bounded uh, by R times uh, the square root of B, um, where R is the radius of, uh, of the cylinder. And uh, we have this, uh, this uh, inequality. So uh, we can see that uh, for the moment, we, uh, we have this uh, uh, Hardy constant. Um, OK. Uh, and uh, this uh, this constant uh, we have uh, here uh, the the Hardy constant can be bounded uh, between um, this quantity and also uh, d minus two square over four, which is uh, uh, the constant in um, in a bounded uh, domain and with singularity in the interior. Um, okay, so uh, we can prove this kind of uh, Hardy inequality, and um, we can construct uh, sequences uh, proving uh, 
uh, proving the uh, upper and the uh, uh, lower bound. And um, uh, we um, we have some uh, some open question. Uh, so, for example, uh, the the constants. Um, uh, optimal constant in uh, constant in uh, the cylinder uh, depend on the radius of the cylinder. Um, also, um, uh, we want to uh, to prove to find minimal sequences. And um, uh, if there are sequences uh, to bound uh, the uh, the optimal constant uh, in uh, in this uh, form. And uh, also the the limit um, of uh, R time uh, some time the optimal constant uh, in uh, in the uh, in the cylinder of uh, radius R. Okay, so um, this is um, uh, this is my uh, my talk. Um, um these are some uh, some pictures from uh, some uh, some workshops uh, in which i uh, i participated with enrique and uh, and some uh, some picture uh, from bilbao and um, i would like to uh, to wish him uh, um, many many years uh, uh, healthy years and um, also uh, with uh, many results, as many as uh, until now. Thank, Thank you, Aurora. Aurora. Thank you very much. Could you so, please uh, zoom a little bit the pictures? There is a picture from Craiova, an uh, uh, shop in Craiova in 2013, I think, and also an shop in Etreta in, uh, in uh, 2018. And uh, to sum out them a little bit. C can you make Soon. it larger, bigger? Larger. Uh, ah, larger. Yes. We can see Luz de Teresa in the third one. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, so the, the third one was in Etreta or Etrera, or what is the name in Bretagne? That's a beautiful place, and uh, in or in Normandy. And uh, Etreta, so, I think it's Etreta. Etreta, yeah, so there is. Uh, Aurora, and then the next one. I don't recognize the next one. So after that, there is uh, Burg, Le Beau, uh, Luz de Teresa, Marjolaine, Marjolaine Puel, uh, yeah. Luc Roviano, um, uh, Rossier, Lionel. Lionel. Uh, so there is two Lionels, right? Messi and, and uh, and Rossier, mm -hmm. so this is uh, Rossier, and then me, and then the person, yeah, now I don't remember who was the one sitting uh, next to Aurora, yeah. And this is a beautiful uh, workshop that uh, <clears throat> Jill organized uh, on a hotel, in a hotel for a few days with friends, very informal. It was kind of a small Benasque over there. Yeah, we really enjoyed. And and the one in the middle, it was an important uh, conference that um, the Cryova team organized, right? 
So you see in the first row, you see Sorin, Puel, um, uh, Ito, uh, Jean Michel, maybe, and then uh, I don't recognize the others now in the hmm, too small. Nice memories. Uh, yeah, so now it's better. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Am I used to snack? Yes, Marius is behind Puel and, and yeah, Jean Pierre Ramon, and this is me with a blue t shirt. Uh, and then behind me, this other guy from Toulouse, uh, whose name I don't remember now. And then Hans Suart behind Arno Munt. And then I see also Christy Kazaku. This is Barbu, uh, Aurora? Uh, yes, the, the one... Barbu, right? Oh. Yeah. Okay. And then back to the left, we see also Liviu Ignat. And where are you in the picture, Aurora? The, the, last, the last one in the middle. Oh, yeah, but you're longer. Yeah. yeah, okay, so here, right? Okay, yeah. Okay, very nice indeed. The, which year was this? 2013, I think. 13, okay. I think, I, I, I'm not sure, but I think. Oh, I see. There is also Martin Gugat here on the front to the next to Jean Michel Coron. Okay, very nice. And the picture in Bilbao was uh, the Olaveaga neighborhood where you were living, right? Where I, where I lived. Um, and, um... Yeah, remember, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, we have been. Uh, there is a very nice fish restaurant. Some of you have been with me there. I, this is the one I like the most, yeah. This is by the river. Okay, so thank you, Aurora, for so many years of uh, friendship and, and hard work. And now you are back to Romania. I mean, you were very generous to, to come to your country, to work in your country, and to, and to help the new generation of students in your country. I'm sure that... Uh, your okay. students are, are appreciating very much all you know, and uh, you are being a model for them to follow. Thank you, Enrique. So if there are questions on the talk, if someone has a question. Uh, maybe I have one question. Um, so I was a bit curious about the kind of potential, the multipolar potential. So is, can you try and motivate a little more the choice of these uh, potentials? So uh, I I don't know too much about uh, about this kind of uh, of potentials, uh, but uh, maybe Christy is uh, the special uh, the the one which knows better uh, the motivations. Um, the work was proposed by him, and uh, okay. I think he knows better uh, about. Uh, the, the physical motivation. Thank so. you. Okay. Yeah. If there are no more questions, so uh, maybe it's time um, to I mean, thank all the speakers in the session and uh, Carlos probably can um, become the host now and uh, in the closing ceremony for this. Uh, very nice online conference, but we could, meaning hopefully we could, we, we, we can have a, meaning a live one in a short time, yes. Okay, so Aurora, you can stop sharing maybe?
Yeah. And meanwhile, Aurora closes. Thank you again uh, to the organizers and uh, to be part of this uh, conference. And thanks, Enrique, for your presence and all the very best and many more happy years to come. Thank you, Rajesh. Thank you. So we are coming to the end. And I, I would like to express all my gratitude to first all the participants, the speakers, all the people who were chairmen, and, and especially I would like to express uh, my grateful to Christian Murillo, who was uh, the person who worked for the homepage. And, and to Christian Sepulveda, who is the chief of uh, all the technical details behind Zoom, okay? He was coordinating every, everything uh, along this three days meeting. Uh, it was uh, really a very good and excellent work. So, on behalf of the organizing and scientific committee, thank you very much to, to both Christian, Christian Murillo and Christian Sepulveda. They help us very, very much. Um, okay. <laughs> During uh, this three days meeting, we had the opportunity, very nice opportunities in my opinion, to review uh, a variety of fields and subjects in which Enrique uh, had uh, seminal and important ideas. And we also had the opportunity to express him our friendship. Uh, I think that uh, he was happy during these three days so we are also very, very happy for being able to, to, to carry out this task in a very friendly way. So thank you very much, uh, Enrique, for the opportunity you gave us to meet together and to enjoy collaboration. I think that uh, to mathematicians, collaboration brings us happiness. Uh, I believe that uh, we are now much more happy than before. <laughs> so many thanks, Enrique. And I, I will give the floor to my colleagues, uh, Rodrigo and Sebastian, that uh, they would like to say few words to close uh, this three days meeting. Um, well, um, thank you, Carlos, and thank you everybody for coming and for this time, especially at the person who, I don't know, has a shame difference uh, time. For example, Luz de Teresa, maybe wake up very early. And, and thank you for, for the time, for um, the, the long session was very strong for everybody. And uh, thank you Enrique for, for your time and especially for your support uh, for a, a lot of students and person who, uh, well, thank you. Thank you for everything. So, uh, I want to thank also to the University of Chile and Santiago and Federico Santa Maria for their support for bringing out to, to carry out this Congress. And, and just thank everyone for participating in this Congress. It was a, a very pleasure to see all of you in this special Congress in honor of our friend Enrique Suazua. So I would like to give a, a round of applause to all of you because 
Jungas. And thank you to Enrique for their support and to stay here in this Congress that we prepare with, with love for you. Thank you, Enrique. Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you. Thank you all. So, well, uh, I said already, right? I will not repeat myself that I know Carlos Conca since 84 and that uh, also Lola, his wife, and Maite, uh, his uh, sister. And, you know, they, we have been with them. We have been in their homes. Uh, they are really like family members. And as all families, there were uh, replicas. There were uh, new generations coming. And, and in this way, we have seen uh, with pleasure, you know, the, the Chilean applied mathematics uh, community is not only very strong within Latin America, but is actually, I think, a reference uh, worldwide. And, and I could see how originally been very concentrated in, you know, in very few people, most of them in CMM, like Carlos and few others. And now the family is much broader. They are occupying positions in different universities, Santa Maria, Valparaiso, Temuco, Concepcion, topics diversified, right? So we have seen all kinds of uh, the presentation of Axel in inverse problems. I mean, this was his sound probably influenced by, by, uh, by Ullmann also, right? That was born also in Chile to get into the topic of inverse problems that, by the way, I mean, was invented by uh, Alberto Calderón, right, in Argentina. Uh, I don't know how, uh, if there is any tension between Argentina and Chile. I don't think so, right? So, it's, I mean, it's fine. I mean, uh, <laughs> by the way, uh, I, I didn't say, but uh, uh, Yves Meyer and Alberto Calderón got the, the honoris causa in Universidad Autónoma de Madrid uh, the same day, right? So I was there, I had the honor of being there, uh, you know, together with these two giants, right? So uh, thank you. I mean, I have to say that when I saw this program with uh, seven hours per day of online talks, I was a bit skeptical because I know how busy people are and how tired everyone is uh, of, of uh, Zoom and online talks. But in the end, it's true that you succeeded on making it really as almost as if we were together. Technically, it's very well done, and this is true. So as Carlos said, it looks like uh, the technicality is not relevant, but in fact it is because this generates this warm atmosphere of being like in a room, right, uh, with, uh, you know, all the the quality of the videos and so it worked very well and I was so happy to see many people that uh, I didn't see for a while. Uh, of course, not everyone could have, uh, I mean, didn't have the opportunity to talk. Everyone will have uh, the serve to give a talk, right? Because, you know, all those in the audience have contributed also to the field as much as anyone else. But of course, for, for reasons of time, I understand that there was a choice, a choice to be made. So thank you all from the most junior to, to the most senior. I, I, I know also now that I cannot rely on my family members, that they will not share with me uh, secrets, uh, you know, and I will not be able to, you know, to discover it until the very last minute. I thought I could detect more in my home than uh, actually I was able to. So thank you all again. And then Sebastian, I, I, I will see you in, in 10 days in, uh, in uh, Erlangen and to the others, well, I hope to meet you, to meet you soon. So uh, especially to uh, Rodrigo, Sebastian and Carlos who did all the work and their families, uh, our warmest thank. So thanks to you uh, and to everybody. Ok, y, y Carlos, suerte en los próximos retos que vienen de aquí a Navidad, ¿no? Que son cada vez más difíciles. Exactamente, ya, 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 me imagino. Ya hablaremos de eso también. También. Okay. Gracias. Un abrazo Chao. grande. Ok.
So now, now it's time for a beer, huh? right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, one or more than one beer. Bastian is already longing uh, for a beer, right? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Steinbach Breu next next week. Ste right? Steinbach, yeah. Next <laughs> week in uh, Steinbach. Okay. Okay. The conference hope, was so nice. Hope, nobody wants to yeah. leave. Huh? Yeah. I hope things normalize uh, soon. And that people have the opportunity to visit Erlangen, that I definitely believe is, uh, unfortunately, I mean, this uh, one and a half year was a spoil, right? So uh, we had just a few visitors. In, when I came there in September, we had a few visitors. And as soon as we wanted to, to really make it a more like a systematic, you know, place to bring foreign years, uh, things uh, were shut down. And uh, I am afraid uh, we are still far from getting normal. You have seen already that Shu Sang pointed out that maybe in 2023. So, okay, we will see. But anyhow, I hope to see you in Erlangen. Um, I think it was already explained that our university, Frederick Alexander University, is extremely uh, fertile and dynamic. Uh, in particular, applied mathematics uh, benefits a lot also of uh, many interactions with the faculty of uh, engineering, with uh, uh, other centers in the perimeter of the university, like the Max Planck Institute, the Fraunhofer. There are plenty of opportunities for young people that want to make an internship either with us in the university or also you know, in these other centers that I mentioned more oriented to specific applications or multidisciplinary research. Um, this is to a large extent due to the, the, the team of our president, uh, Joaquin Horniger, who with uh, Gunther was working as vice president of research for six years. And they really made a, a, a great effort to, to push forward, you know, really innovative research. Um, well, uh, the city is fantastic. So you're, we even have a beach uh, during the summer, right? So they put some sand in the in the main uh, square of the of the of the city. I hope and, they don't steal um, it from Spain. Well, actually, you see you see this uh, this uh, this uh, square in virtually in the in the in the in the screen in the screen. So I hope you will be able to to come. And also that you consider FAU as your home university and uh, also a, a possible place to send your students, as we said. Actually, uh, the, the government of uh, Bavaria, uh, Bavaria is the lander in which uh, Erlangen is located, Erlangen Nuremberg, uh, capital being in Munich. Uh, the, the government of Bavaria is developing a very ambitious high tech agenda under which we, we were funded a full new department of data science. We are also running a new center for mathematics of data yeah. science. And uh, this is also important for the colleagues in Chile. Um, mm -hmm. There is a, a, a center uh, funded by the government of Bavaria in order to foster scientific and academic cooperation with uh, Latin America, where there are also uh, funding programs and actually when professor professor Zamorano comes on November 22 we have an appointment for the next day or or two days after with uh, Mrs uh, Irma Irma de Melo, de Melo. De Melo uh, uh, she is from Sao Paulo and she has been the director of this uh, by lat by uh, Bayern and lat uh, Latin uh, this laboratory, and so we will we will explore the possibility of making these exchanges uh, in applied mathematics more more systematic. So, well, uh, that's your home, and, and you are very welcome. And as you know, you know, once you bring your mathematics with you, you don't need much more, right? Maybe the laptop we can offer wireless connection, and with this we know everyone is happy, right? So you know. Uh, once you have the wireless connection, the rest is secondary. Whether you have a hotel or not is not so relevant, right? Under the condition that there is wireless. Okay. So, thank you again. Thanks again. Okay, and thank now beer time, right? I think is you should now run all for the beer. 
There's also Franconian wine, you know. Uh, yeah, there is also. There is also Franconian wine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And oh, the, there is yeah, also but... Chilean wine. Huh? There is also I Chilean wine. wine huh? I right. wine. German. And, and French wine. <laughs> I mean, French <laughs> have also something to do with wine. Right? So... The, the Chilean wines are, are very good, actually. I think. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I discovered there are some that disappeared in, in France and they, you have them in Chile. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Actually, Rodrigo lives in a vineyard, more or less. So this is what he looks so happy oh. that time, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He wakes up and smells, uh, you know, the surrounding uh, vineyards. Yeah. You know, last time, Carlos, when, when there was the conference on inverse problems, right, in, in, in Santiago de, de Chile, I was yes, with Tom I Banks. Perfectly. Yeah, yeah, I was with Tom Banks and my wife in the, in the, win, in the vineyard, so the Central Valley, right? And right. I missed I missed my flight to to Brazil and and uh, Gustavo Perlemanzala was waiting right. <laughs> for us. Uh, for so the wine reason, was very good. Right? Yeah, you missed it for a good reason, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah yes, and something also. The Chilean yeah. vineyards can be visited. Mm -hmm. They they all all of them they have hotels and restaurants and uh, they are visited by many tourists. But, but Carlos, also, I remember you, I, when I visited Chile, I, I, you had some, uh, some alcohol, which were quite good. It, it looks like it's uh, sweet, but uh, you can be, tra be betrayed by that, actually. Yes, of course. It's pisco, no? It's the pisco, pisco no? Pisco, pisco. The pisco, yeah, yeah, I remember. <laughs> and you have also excellent uh, juice, yeah. real uh, mm -hmm. juice fruit. Uh, I, uh, I like uh, all of them. <laughs> it's a kind of uh, eau de vie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. I remember being surprised. <laughs> yeah, and I, also something I, I didn't mention, but I think is quite remarkable, is that Chile, Chile, as I said, I mean, Gorbea, who was bass born and was the founder of mm. one of the founders of the University of Chile, uh, it has been also a very friendly and open land and country to all foreigners, right? So I'm, I'm very glad to see that this is even true in our community, right? So uh, you see Alberto, Alberto Mercado now that he's so uh, fertile and happy in, in, um, in Chile. I think, Alberto, you are from Mexico, no? Maybe some people don't make the difference between... I mean, uh, but but you are right. Uh, I, am from, I am from Mexico. Yeah, yeah I was a student of, of Lucero. No? But, yeah, you were a student of Lucero. So now now he's a Mexican in uh, in Chile, yeah. and, then, and then Rajes, uh, who uh, he is not Mexican. No, Rajes, uh, you are not. I mean, you are. Uh, <laughs> huh? Rajes, you are from Bangalore, or where 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 from were Chennai. you born? From from Madras, huh? from Madras, Chennai. Madras, and you are also uh, yeah. now uh, part of the Chilean applied yeah. mathematical community. So that's that's very remarkable. I think the fact that not only Chile was very successful training students locally, then sending them away and bring them them back to you know to grow the community for well, I know as I said, Carlos for thirty seven years now, but also to be able to attract you know, uh, foreigners that could have chosen any other country and that decided to develop their careers in, in Chile. So that's very remarkable. Also, uh, we are very uh, proud of all of them. Huh? Yeah. But Carlos, I think, and, and Enrique, very... I think also you are the first, of, you are the first uh, international research laboratory, no? In 2020. Yes, from the CNRS. The yeah, CMM from the CNRS. The first yeah, yeah. International it Laboratory. To, it used to be what we call UMI, and then uh, switch. Yeah, and but you were the first, uh, being uh, the first international research laboratory uh, created. I, I think. We are we are still linked to CNRS. Yeah, yeah. But now we are another kind of unity. It is not the international UMI. It is uh, something a little different, but uh, okay. we are still very close to them. We receive at least uh, 80 or 90 
French research church every every year. So mm. you can imagine the yeah, you need you need you need some wine really and uh, some pisco. Some pisco, yes. Now we have the <laughs> denomination d'origine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's great. Anyway, thank you very much to the organizer. Happy birthday to Enrique. Happy birthday also to Carlos because I <laughs> discovered thank it was also his birthday. <laughs> and uh, really, thanks to all the organizer, to the scientific committee. It's very, I'm very happy to to have been invited and to participate, participate and to hear to these very nice talks. And uh, long life to to you. And to uh, Enrique, and thanks again for this uh, beautiful event and very well organized. So I hope the slides will be put online, right? If possible, that will be very, ah, yes. very, very useful because there are many other people that could not do it maybe uh, on real time, but uh, will certainly enjoy of uh, of all the material presented. All the material presented can be reviewed on YouTube. Maybe okay. Sebastian yeah. can talk us, give us yeah, some insight on this uh, ah. YouTube uh, alternative. Very yeah, good. we hope. I hope that the next week we can uh, get the all the link to, uh, to YouTube to the all the talk of this three-day congress, and we, we will put Netflix, in the in the web page. If Netflix asks, uh, you should negotiate uh, strong, right? So you, don't, you don't give it for free to Netflix. Right? I don't know if yeah. Netflix is interested in. I'm sure in they will. Story. I'm sure they will. <laughs> yeah, and also the slides. I think it would be nice to have many of the slides for the talks. The slides, yes. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Hmm. The web page was very well done. That's uh, particularly interesting. And uh, this yeah, was Christian Murillo. Yeah. So yeah, mm. give him our congratulations, please. Thank you, Enrique. Está muy bonita, realmente muy bonita. Mm. Okay. Okay. So time for pisco. Time for pisco. We are wine. Everything, <laughs> whenever you want. <laughs> bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. Bye bye. See you. Nice. Good evening. Bye. 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 See you soon. Thanks Ciao. again. Eh? Bye bye. Ciao. Bye bye. 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 Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Nobody Gracias. wants to leave. <laughs> you, you have to close it. This you is a very good it. sign. Bye -bye. Nobody wants to leave. This is a very good sign. Very <laughs> important word, carrete. <laughs> okay. Okay. See you then. See you. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, bye. Bye, everyone. Very soon. Huh? Bye. Bye, Carlos. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, bye. bye Fatia. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks a lot. It bye was bye. a pleasure to see you again. Yeah, for me too. Take care. Take care, you too. Yeah, bye bye. Hope everything is going well for you. Huh? Yeah. Bye. Ok, gracias, gracias por todo. Bueno, Carlos, deberíamos cortarlo para. Sí, cortar, para... porque sí. si no, nada. Gracias eh, de nuevo a vosotros oh, el, gracias a ti, hombre. por la organización que ha sido espectacular, ¿no? Y bueno, espero que ahora ya merecidamente podáis descansar con, con la familia, ¿no? ¿Eh? <risa> espero que estén todos bien. ¿eh? Ya sí, creciendo los, los, las, las niñas, ¿no, Rodrigo? Ya años. Enormes. Enorme. Años, años 17 y 10, ¿o cómo? 
17 y, y 9. Y 9, vale, muy bien. Fenómeno. Y, y Carlos, a ti te toca para Navidad, me dijiste, ¿no? Para Navidad, el 23. Tengo cambio de folio y de todo. <risas> vale, vale, vale. ¿Y qué va, cómo van los nervios? Muy nervioso, la verdad es que... Muy, muy nervioso. Claro. Pero bueno, Lola yo creo que más todavía. ¿eh? Sí, aunque hace punto, ¿no? Eso no le... Te no pasa le... los días tejiendo. Tejiendo, pero eso no, así todo no le rebaja la... la... El, el, el nerviosismo. Incluso el médico le dijo que tenía tendinitis, no sé. Sí, de tanto coser. Tendrá que coser con los dedos de los pies. ¿no? Tendrá que pasar a los dedos de los pies. Sí. Muy bien. Oye, pues nada, cuidaros mucho. Ya nos hablamos ¿eh? por, sí, tú también. Eh, por Navidad, gracias, pero bueno, a, grande, Enrique, a Sebastián nos viene con el regalo en 10 días, o sea que tendremos sí. aires de Chile pronto. Venga, un abrazo, ¿eh? Os dejo un ahora. Un cariño a Magalia, Inara y a Yane. De tu es. parte. Hasta luego. Hasta luego, Agur. Bueno, nos vemos. Gracias. Nos vemos, Rodrigo. Nos vemos. Un abrazo, ¿eh? Sebastián. Un abrazo. Un abrazo, ¿eh?